Welcome to SVG TV News for Friday, September 24th, 2021. I am Rochelle Batiste with the details. 87 new COVID-19 positive cases were reported from 474 samples processed on Wednesday, September 22nd, resulting in a positivity rate of 18.3%. One of the new cases is said to be a fully vaccinated imported case from the United Kingdom, while another was detected on exit screening. All other cases are contacts of positives or persons seeking care. There are currently 20 patients admitted for COVID-19 at the Argyle Isolation Facility. 19 are said to be unvaccinated and one partially vaccinated. The National Emergency Management Organization, NEMO, said a further nine patients have been admitted to the COVID-19 ward at the Milton Cato Memorial Hospital. Eight are unvaccinated and one fully vaccinated. Seven new recoveries were noted over the reported period. Period. 777 cases are currently active and 17 persons with COVID-19 have died. 3,158 cases of COVID-19 and 2,364 recoveries have been recorded in St. Vincent and the Grenadines since March 2020. Nemo said in view of the confirmed presence of the Delta, Mu and Gamma variants in the community, and a significant increase in the number of new infections, transmission, a severe COVID-19 disease and deaths, strict enforcement and compliance with all protocols and recommendations by everyone is strongly recommended. And Minister of Health, Wellness and the Environment, Sinclair Jimmy Prince, continues to appeal to members of the public to desist from any form of mass gatherings at this time as the country faces a new surge in COVID-19 cases. In the last week, SVG's average positivity rate was 15.4%. Minister Prince said the protocols for large gatherings apply to everyone, including omnibus operators trend of mass gatherings in private and public settings. We are appealing again to the public. This is dangerous. It is not necessary. We have some SRNOs out. We still insist on these. People at funerals and weddings and other gatherings, um, people in vans, we are asking you, of course, to desist from overloading vans from overloading um, these assembly points because it is a danger to our health. Vaccinated mass events will be temporarily halted as the Ministry of Health, Wellness and the Environment will not be processing any applications for persons wanted to host such events. This was announced at yesterday's news conference by Health Promotions Officer Shanika John, who made it clear that the decision taken has nothing to do with any super spreader events. At this time, the Health Services Subcommittee, the Ministry of Health, were not accepting any new requests for application to exceed the capacity within the mass gathering. So any fully vaccinated party, event, wedding, um, funerals, etc., camps, anything like that, we're not accepting. We really recommend at this time that persons stay within the required amount, which is 10 persons indoor and 20 persons outdoor. This is, has nothing to do with any of the activities being a super spreader or anyone testing positive from those activities. This is just simply us from the ministry diverting our resources and energy elsewhere where we think it is much more needed at this time. Flu clinics have been reactivated and weekend vaccination drives intensified. This is according to the health promotions officer who at yesterday's news conference said this is part of measures being taken to help curb and contain the spread of COVID-19 on island. For the Maraqua Health District, which is the Mesper Health District, the Levi Latham Health Complex, the flu clinic would be in that complex and also the vaccination site as well. For the Georgetown District, the Georgetown Health Center would be responsible for the flu clinic and also for vaccination as well. For those persons that are over the river, you can see care at the Overland Health Center for your testing. And they would also advise you on vaccination as the Pfizer vaccine and the Sputnik V vaccine requires an appointment. For the Pembroke Health District, your flu clinic would be at the Layu Health Center. 
and your vaccination site would be at the Bookerman's Polyclinic. For the Chateaubelair Health District, your flu clinic is at the Trumaca Health Center, and your vaccination site would be at the Spring Village Health Center. For the Northern and Southern Grenadines, all of those sites remain as it is for testing and vaccination, including drives across St. Vincent and the Grenadines. John said some clinics are also being used as sites for vaccination drives. It's important to note that if you are or you suspect that you have been exposed to COVID-19 and someone says to you, well, I've been tested and you consider yourself to be a contact, I want you to consider and ask yourself a question. Was I around this person for more than 15 minutes without a face mask? And what was the level of interaction? Were we eating lunch? Were we um, kissing? Were we hanging out? What was the level of interaction? And that will re really determine your next step. If you feel that you were around somebody more than 15 minutes without a mask and the level of interaction was extremely high, testing too early could give you a false sense of security if you get a negative test result. So if someone says to me today, I tested positive and I rush to Kingston Health Center and I test and they tell me my results are negative and I go about my day and three days later, I start feeling sick. All of my interactions for those last three days, I could have potentially be spreading the virus. So we want you to quarantine for at least five days and retest on day six. Chief Lab Technologist Elliot Samuel said while they are stocking up on supplies to meet the demand for testing at the molecular lab, they are preparing for when they may no longer be able to test everyone suspected of having COVID-19. At yesterday's news conference, Samuel explained the reason why some may be tested while others may not. About something. When you look at the transmissibility of the virus and we, and we take, for example, the mathematical modeling into context where... Uh, it is suggested that where the, where the Delta is concerned, a single infected individual can infect up to 2,000 persons in five to seven days. Um, there is going to come a time when the, when the Ministry of Health and, and, and the public health team is going to have to develop what is called uh, a sampling and a testing strategy. So we may not be able to practically test everybody um, if we hit high, very high numbers. But at the same time, we at the same time we are doing all we can to, to ensure that we have supplies on island to sustain diagnostic capacity. Samuel said that the molecular lab has also faced the challenge of persons wanting their results speedily, which could be problematic. He advised persons who may require an exit screening test to apply in a timely manner. So for the persons who are doing exit screens, I I I want to reach out to you. I know we have a 24 to 40 hour turnaround time. I want to reach out to you to do that online application process, stick to the five days um, protocol that we have in place and try to get your samples into the lab within that 72 hour window, inclusive of your travel day. So if you're traveling on Wednesday, you have to, you have to do the application so that you will be scheduled for a test on Monday. Now, the reason for that is that we, we very often don't want to leave anybody out and i know sometimes even when we say that we don't guarantee a test to travel it has to it has to take a lower priority ranking than our, than our, our public health contact tracing test we very often don't want to leave any 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 anybody else and the staff at the molecular lab the molecular lab who is doing a phenomenal job um they will go above and beyond to ensure that you get your test results but sometimes you do call and make the situation difficult for them um because I think you're a little bit concerned that you may not get your test results in time. Meanwhile, the health authorities are awaiting test results from samples sent to the Caribbean Public Health Agency, CAFRA, in Trinidad and Tobago weeks ago, which could indicate whether there are more COVID-19 variants in the state. This was noted at yesterday's news conference by the chief lab technologist who explained that the molecular lab cannot do testing for COVID-19 variants. We very often don't want to leave anybody out and i know sometimes even when we say that we don't guarantee it a, 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 a test to travel it has to it has to take a lower priority ranking than our, than our, our public health contact tracing test we very often don't want to leave any 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 anybody else and the staff at the molecular lab the molecular lab who is doing a phenomenal job um they will go above and beyond to ensure that you get your test results but sometimes you do call and make the situation difficult for them um, because I think you're a little bit concerned that you may not get 
SVG is one of many CARICA member states that CAFRA does testing for, hence the backlog. Samuel said th that as of late August, samples to be tested have tripled. There are currently three COVID-19 variants in SVG, one Delta, one Gamma, and five Mu, which originated locally. Samuel said that they are still doing antigen and rapid testing at various health centers island-wide. Medical officer Dr. Roger Duncan said it is important that persons know their contacts, especially in workplaces, as he warned against the fast spread of the Delta variant. At yesterday's news conference, Dr. Duncan outlined when and who should get tested. Computer desk, if you share work tools, you know, if you share cash registers and so forth. So those, those are the people that we go to consider close contacts. And that's the first thing you want to identify. Who are the close contacts? Having identified these, you're going to ask these close contacts to self-isolate for at least five days, and then they'll get tested. Of course, if any one of these close contacts becomes symptomatic, that's it. If they have a fever, if they get a cough, a sore throat, shortness of breath, or any other symptom during this five-day period, then they will test immediately and not wait for the five-day period to expire. But if you have no symptoms, you wait to the end of the five-day five day period, then you test, and then we will, you know, we with some level of certainty. Of course, we won't be 100% certain. The medical officer reiterated the need for persons to seek care early and not to self-diagnose. Uh, Dr. Duncan noted that while vaccinated persons can still contract COVID-19, it has been proven that vaccines prevent hospitalization and even death, and he used the opportunity to encourage persons to get vaccinated. Even with the, the small number of breakthrough infections we, we, we've had, and I mean, I said it was 2.7% or 19 of the currently active cases. Um, only one of those persons were hospitalized. And, you know, so uh, the, the bulk of the hospitalization, over 99% of the hospitalization is among unvaccinated people, persons, sorry, and all the deaths are among unvaccinated persons. So I, I think, I mean, it's not just here, but everywhere else. The same thing is happening in, in Grenada, in Barbados, and in Antigua, in Jamaica. That the data is clearly indicating that vaccinated persons are being protected from severe disease hospitalization and death. More than 150 countries, including St. Vincent and the Grenadines, made a commitment to transform their food systems while championing greater participation and equity among farmers, women, youth, and indigenous groups. Addressing the first ever UN Food System Summit virtually last evening, Prime Minister Dr. Ralph Gonzalez said that amidst the perilous climate change, the quest to defeat the undernourishment in countries seems an insurmountable task, but it can be done if they work together. Embedded within our collective consciousness reside the tools to address malnutrition and to safeguard the ecological systems on which our continued human existence so heavily depends. Through a renewed multilateralism with this United Nations and its specialized agencies at its core, we can ensure that everyone everywhere has access to safe and nutritious food. All stakeholders, including farmers, fishers, and indigenous communities must mobilize themselves and be mobilized alongside their national governments to establish sustainable practices and to provide adequate sustenance to all. During this pivotal decade to achieve the sustainable development goals, let us work together to build stronger cooperative networks, to defeat hunger, to end conflict, to strengthen resilience, to promote justice, and to advance sincerely a common agenda for all of humanity. Prime Minister Gonzalez further spoke on what SVG has been doing to strengthen and transform its food system. The Grenadines has embarked on an ambitious campaign to support our small farmers, to help build their capacities and expand their production of organic and nutritious foods. So too have we engaged our fisher folk, providing permissible subsidies and fiscal support. All of this we have pursued despite the economic fallout of COVID-19 and the recent volcanic eruptions that destroyed approximately one third of our nation's productive capacity. Notwithstanding these immense hurdles, we have kept the faith to ensure that life, living and production continue for all our people. The Food and Agricultural Organization, the FAO, and the World Food Program, the WFP, have been our committed partners during these trying times. Global stakeholders, in particular developed countries, have been summoned to match their endeavors 
with deep emission cuts and wide-ranging commitments for predictable and reliable development financing. More pressingly, the international financial architecture must be suitably reformed to provide social protections to the most vulnerable, to account sufficiently for our small island exceptionalism, and to strike a balance between economic well-being and economic welfare through the promotion of sustainable economic practices. The UN Food Systems Summit was held in an effort to spur national and regional action to deliver the UN 17 Sustainable Development Goals through transforming food systems. Among the goals for 2030 are zero hunger, zero poverty, gender equality, and climate action. Meanwhile, Ella Louise Gonzalez, wife of Prime Minister Dr. Ralph Gonzalez, yesterday participated in the third annual Spouse of Caricom Leaders Action Network side event. Uh, this year's event was held under the theme COVID-19 and Scal Pillars Impact on Solutions. Addressing the meeting, Mrs. Gonzalez focused on the COVID-19 health challenges in women and children and also the challenges in St. Vincent and the Grenadines uh, dealing with the pandemic, the eruptions of Lasso Frey Volcano and the active hurricane season an internationalist solidarity our misery would have been unbearable day by day however we see the sunlight rays of hope and genuine optimism about our future despite recurring doubts thus our people's resilience our government's monumental efforts in concert with our friends abroad and God's redemptive grace we are lifting the burdens of our people, especially the poor, the women and children. My final point is that we need women's leadership now more than ever. This is critical to implementing a gender responsive recovery from the pandemic. In my own country, nine out of the 11 members of the core leadership team responding to the pandemic are women. We need to shape the policies that encourage more women to participate at all levels of decision making. In all this, the advocacy of SCLAN is helpful and vital going forward. In other news, traditional licensed marijuana cultivators are not being left behind in light of the challenges faced due to the eruptions of Lasso Freya Volcano. That's the assurance coming from Minister of Agriculture, Supporter Caesar, as SVG's medic Medical Cannabis Authority received 10,000 premium uh, feminine uh, cannabis seeds from the Pure Jamaican group of companies Pure Jamaican. The donation is in response to the damage caused by the eruptions of Lasso Freya Volcano in April, which devastated the germ plasm of licensed traditional cultivators located in close proximity to the volcano. The seeds received from Jamaica uh, were produced under a research and development initiative spearheaded by Pure Jamaicans and other partners. We saw the eruptive stage, the start of the eruptive stage of La Souffre and the subsequent 32 volcanic eruptions of La Souffre. We knew from the get-go that there would be intense destruction of our agricultural germplasm, not only for cannabis, but for other commodities. And I am happy today to receive this assistance that will go a very long way in augmenting the residue of the germplasm that we have here in St. Vincent and the Grenadines. It is delight, it is a delight to see the traditional cultivators here with us. Robert Wright, a director of Pure Jamaican and chairman of the G1 Life Foundation, handed over the seeds to CEO of the SVG Medical Cannabis Authority, uh, Dr. Gerald Thompson, who said that the seeds will help to rehabilitate the livelihood and production capacity of the farmers as the planting materials were designed for a tropical setting. The presentation to see if lands at Top Hill Lasham will be safe and to look at other possibilities. But the eruption of Lasso Free has also done a very, a very sad thing. It has destroyed a lot of the farms on the slopes of Lasso Free. Notwithstanding, most of those farms were illegal farms. There has been the destruction and loss of a lot of seed varieties and land races. And so it was quite 
interesting when we received communication from Dr. Emmanuel that entities in Jamaica, not entities in United States or, or just or, or, or Canada or anywhere, although GI Life is US based, that they wanted to make a donation of feminized seeds, seeds that are designed for tropical climate. Not for Sweden or Greenland or somewhere like that, but for tropical settings like Savings and Grandies. Grenada's airlift committee is said to be in negotiations with SVG to trash out a two-year issue that threatens the services of SVG Air between Grenada and Karakou. We hear more in this report from GBN Television. In 2019, Managing Director of SVG Air, Paul Gravel, had categorically denied the pulling out of the airline from Grenada while admitting to financial challenges. Fast forward to September 2019, whereby Minister for Carico and Pitimatic Affairs, Kendra Matthew and Stewart, was again dispelling rumors about the fate of SVG Air in Kareku. The government of Grenada in 2019 had confirmed the number of meetings with the management of SVG Air to negotiate a way forward. Andrews is now questioning what transpired in those negotiations, citing the importance of the airline to travel, medical emergencies among others. He suggested government use revenues from the sister isles to ensure the sustainability of the airline. But the reality is that we generate sufficient income through taxes. So some of those should go to support um, the airline, the airlines like, 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 to support the airline like that. Minister for Civil Aviation, Clarice Modest Cohen, confirmed to GBN that despite the negotiations with the management of SVG Air since 2019, nothing concrete was finalized. In the operations of the country, sometimes you have a lockdown, sometimes you have no movement, and all of that, it has not helped the situation. And so what they have, what, 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 what they have said is that they are running at a loss, and um, they may have to pull out or they are considering. Noting the importance of the airline for travel between the islands, government has again resumed negotiations with SVG Air, who has been performing at a loss for more than 20 years. The CEO has also promised to, um, to make a, give us a proposal as to what the situation is. However, um, the last thing I was told is that he had said that um, they're looking at charters in the meantime and that a plane will be left um, in Grenada. Minister Modest Cohen told GBN that the LF committee was expected to meet with the airline on Wednesday. In some police news now, we hear that the police have arrested and charged jointly uh, Carlton Denny, a 29-year-old businessman of Kane Hall, and Rahiji Spence, a 23-year-old businessman of Prospect, with the offences of burglary and handling stolen goods. The accused men allegedly between 8.45 p.m. on Thursday, September 9th and 10 a.m. on Friday, September 10th, entered tent number six at the decommissioned E.T. Joshua Airport town as trespassers and stole several grocery items valued at 8,823 EC dollars, the property of the government of St. Vincent and the Grenadines. Both men were further charged with having in their possession several grocery items reasonably suspected of being sold, stolen or unlawfully obtained at Queen's Drive on Thursday, September 16th. The accused men appear before the Kingston Magistrate Court to answer to the charges and pleaded not guilty. They were granted bail in the sum of 5,000 EC dollars each with one surety. The matter was adjourned to Tuesday, December 7th, 2021. And the police have also arrested and charged uh, Kimron Scott, a 22-year-old refrigeration technician of Redemption Sharps with possession of an unlicensed firearm and ammunition. The accused allegedly had in his possession 1.38 revolver without a license issued under the Firearm Act. He was further charged with having in his possession uh, five rungs of 0.38 ammunition without a license 
issued under the Firearm Act at Paul's Avenue yesterday, Thursday, September 23rd. Scott appeared before the Kingsville Magistrate Court to answer the charges and pleaded guilty. The matter was adjourned to Monday, September 27th for facts and sentencing at the Serious Offences Court.